Delano, what, what is it that would uh, need to be said by the Fed this week to spook equity markets? You know, I think it would be a change from their current prevailing narrative that the Fed has kind of given for investors saying, you know, they're seeing inflation as transitory and that they're going to stay the course with uh, kind of the mandate they've been going for it so far. And I think that would spook, especially on the growth side, that would spook investors. And, and as a primarily growth investor, you know, what we saw today was kind of, uh, kind of a good indication, as Mike was speaking about. Uh, it wasn't a big move, uh, but it was an indication that, you know, these fears, the biggest theme coming out of the first quarter um, is kind of being pulled back a little bit and growth has come back into play over the last several weeks. And that's something to be watching. But I think that biggest thing would be a change from the narrative from the Fed. And I, I don't, you know, I'm not pre predicting that. I think they're, they've been staying strong on the, the transitory effects currently. So I think that would be the biggest thing, though, Wilfred. Bitcoin jumping after Elon Musk made new comments about the cryptocurrency. Let's get to Kate Rooney for that story. Kate. Hey, Wilf, Bitcoin briefly hopping above the $40,000 level for the first time since May. The rally started over the weekend after Elon Musk said Tesla would start accepting Bitcoin again once there's confirmation of, quote, reasonable clean energy use by miners. There was also some news of an upgrade to Bitcoin's network coming in the fall. But Bitcoin's price moved even higher after bullish comments by billionaire hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones on Squawk Box this morning, Jones says he, quote, likes Bitcoin as a portfolio diversifier and wants 5% of his portfolio in crypto. That's the same level as cash, gold and commodities for Jones. Back to you. OK, thanks so much for that. Mike, uh, interesting hearing uh, Paul Judy Jones's take on this, which was sort of an arbitrary 5% long term, yeah. no matter what, as opposed to specifically short term bullish on Bitcoin. But what did you make of uh, Elon Musk's rationale for selling? Um, it seems retroactive. <laughs> it yeah. seems like they sold. Uh, some people f said, well, they sold, and actually that's how they made their quarter. If you looked at the profit on that small bit Bitcoin sale, the idea that Tesla needed to sell that amount to just to test the liquidity of the underlying market to see if it would tank things. I mean, I think it was pretty well demonstrated before that, that the market could handle that volume and more. Uh, so it is very interesting. And also this idea of taking Bitcoin as payment for the vehicles has always been a little bit of a side issue. I mean, I don't think that was a make or break for the company anyway. Really, it's all about atmospherics because there's nothing that it really trades off of aside from, you know, the baseline long term expectations or the, the case for digital money and crowd psychology uh, in the short term. So it looks like the chart has maybe made a stand in the in the low 30,000s a couple of times. And that's also kind of giving people some idea that maybe it's firmed up a bit. Well, there's also this question of of how unenvironmentally friendly right. it is in the yeah. mining, because Elon Musk says that that is predicated on him buying Bitcoin again. Is there any or him accepting it as accepting payment? It? Yeah. Is there any thought that 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 it's because it's consuming less energy or it's becoming more renewable to mine Bitcoin? I mean, as we know both sides of that argument, I mean, obviously nothing much has changed in the last couple of months, one way that's or the point. other on that to, to kind of account for the reversals. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's going to be an issue that shadows uh, cryptocurrencies for a long time is the power consumption and whether, in fact, it's more renewable uh, than other types of electricity usage it might be the case. But there's also just an enormous amount of power that's being consumed by something that many people don't think is necessarily you know, crucial to the world. And people differ on that, of course. Delano, where do you stand on the broader Bitcoin debate and, and Paul Tudor Jones's point about having as much as 5% uh, in his portfolio long term as, as a hedge? Yeah, well, uh, that's, you know, that's a great allocation. You know, I've been telling, you know, clients to have anywhere from 5 to 10% um, as a hedge in their portfolio. And as was, was spoke about uh, by the panel is, you know, there is obviously the adoption uh, as a payment um, platform. Obviously, there's also the talk of an inflation hedge and what it can do for certain economies and countries. But, you know, th these are all things that are going to be played out over the long term. So as you're looking at these different, you know, price fluctuations over the short term, as a long term investor, you know, you want to look a little bit further out. And, and obviously, sometimes, Wilfred, it's, it's hard to understand if I should check CNBC for some of the price ticker um, changes for, for BTC or just look down Elon Musk's uh, Twitter timeline to see if there's a better gauge on what's going on. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.